Very good. Okay. Now, what are we talking about? We're talking about how to have lasting appreciation and love for our creator. <clears throat> and as we said so many times, God is among the many other <clears throat> jobs that he has, he's creating us. So he's infinitely, infinitely close to us. On the other hand, God is also creating all the angels and the upper worlds and all this. So he's infinitely far away from us because he's above the upper worlds. <clears throat> and God expects us, he is, God has put us, excuse me one second, God has put us right in the center, the epicenter of this whole entire business. <clears throat> God's main attention is on us. First of all, it's on the Jews. But the Jews, their job is to show all of mankind how precious they are in God's eyes. But mankind can't come to this idea on their own, which we sort of see. I mean, you see all the other nations in the world. <clears throat> they have all these religions. They're free to do anything they want. They can make up any religions they want, freedom. And they, there is even religions that are borrowed from Judaism and claim to replace Judaism. And they don't get it right. That they can do anything they want to. But to say that they worship the creator of the universe who's creating them right now and who gave the Torah to tell us how to serve him, <clears throat> nobody got it. They just didn't get it. You think it would at least arouse their curiosity a little bit. You know, is what the Jews say, is it really true or not? You know, people are interested in UFOs and in, in, you know, what is it? Bigfoot, what's it called over there? In the, you know, the, the, in, in the, the, what is it called? The Loch Ness Mast Monster. You know, one person claims he saw it, but everybody's interested. People are interested in this. Does it really, is it really there? Is it not there? You figured people would be genuinely interested in the Torah. And then we get it right that it came from God and that it's unchangeable. But they're not because the Jews, a lot of the Jews also don't, but that's because the Jews are influenced by the world around them. <clears throat> so the point that that's supposed to be that everybody realizes how infinitely close God is to us and how much God loves us, how much he cares for us. But... <clears throat> It's very, very easy to get it wrong. Why? Because God hides himself. Why does he hide himself? Because that's he wanted a world. God wanted the world. That's the story of the Bible. God wanted there to be a world. If God didn't need a, the world, we wouldn't have to have a Torah. We wouldn't have to have any telling us what to do. We'd be like angels. You know automatically what to do. huh? Like animals. Animals automatically, they know what to do. It's not a bad dog or a good dog. Dogs act like dogs. Some of them bite. Some of them are nice. Some of them are this. That's just their nature. You can't say he's guilty. This dog is guilty of stealing wait, another dog's, uh, you know, steak or something. <clears throat> There's no laws. Everything would just be nature. So God gave, gave, put, wanted a world, and he wanted <clears throat> we should have free choice, and he wanted us to make the right choice, <clears throat> but usually we don't. How can we make the right choice? <clears throat> you have to have love. You have to have appreciation of the creator. Why should I do what God wants? I'm, I'm going to be losing a lot. If I do what God wants, I'll lose it. I can't do what I want. I can't eat what I want. I can't marry who I want. <clears throat> I can't, you know, just... The, 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 the Nazis had a big thing. Think with your arms. Think with your legs, with your thighs. Think. Don't, don't think with your mind. Just do whatever, whatever, you, whatever you're told to do. Just do it. <clears throat> do it. No appreciation of life. No appreciation of values. No appreciation of anything. There's only one thing, victory or whatever, any. <clears throat> so that's not the point. The point is we're supposed to have an appreciation of the creator. A person has an appreciation of the creator, he won't want to destroy the creation. He won't want to go against what the creator wants. He won't want to. But the problem is to have an appreciation. Once you have an appreciation of God, you have love. <clears throat> because appreciating God, God is not just a, you know, a, uh, how do you say, a, a biblical character. God is actually creating us. And if there's anything that's valuable, to us in our life, so we should realize that it's, it's it's a gift from God. Every minute of our life is a gift from God. Our eyes, our ears, our nose, our children, our house, <clears throat> our legs, our head, our this, that you wake up in the morning, that you go to sleep at night. Everything that you're alive, everything in, the, in your life, <clears throat> everything there is, is a gift from God. <clears throat> and also, our free will is also a gift from God. 
and we can use it the wrong way, and we can excuse ourselves by saying, this is what God wants. Like this is a thief. Before he goes to steal, he prays to God for success. It says in the, in the, in the Gomorrah, in, in Brachas. It's really in Ayin Yaakov. In any case, why does a thief pray to God before he goes? Because he says, who made me a thief? God made me a thief. I want to be a good thief. But it's going against the Torah. <clears throat> you can't do that. Right? But nevertheless, you should, th that's where free will comes in. You have free will to realize that everything comes from God. And nevertheless, you can use that to go against God. So, but if you have love, if you have love of God, and you really love God like you love yourself, that's the problem with this thief. He loves himself. He doesn't love God. He loves himself. He knows God says he shouldn't steal. But his emotions, his inner personal intimate connection is with himself. And it's not with God. <clears throat> so, and and, and uh, he thinks, why, why should I be thankful to God? What have I got to be thankful to God for? What, so he gives me my, so what? So I can do whatever I want to. I don't have to be thankful. <clears throat> like a person that wins the, the lottery, right? He wins a lottery. The, the, what is it called? The Powerball, right? $25 million, $25 billion. But he goes to the people and says, oh, thank you. Thank you. What do you mean? He won. Somebody had to win. So he won. The same thing as some, so God creates everybody, keeps them alive. So he kept me alive. What's the big deal? But if you have love of God, if you have love, if you appreciate the fact that God is creating you, if you appreciate anything, then you should appreciate your creator. Should. <clears throat> so that's the idea of having love of God. And that's what he's talking about. That's giving birth. That's what he talks about. says there will not be a, Meshakela is a person, we're talking about spiritual terms now. Spiritual terms means a person that he is able to arouse love and appreciation for the creator and for every detail of the creation. He's thankful and he's grateful and he has love of God and he is afraid <coughs> of doing anything against God. <coughs> yeah, but it goes away. It goes away. Boop, all of a sudden he loves himself. He loves himself. Could be he really loves God and he prays to God and everything. And then afterwards he goes out and he robs a bank. What's this? Get out of here. What's this thing? I hate these things. There's pop-ups. How do I get rid of the pop-ups? There. Okay. The pops up. They claim to be your friends and they're really look, look at this. Awful. Okay. <clears throat> Then there's another type. Then there's a person that he tries to think about God. He reads all these things that I'm talking about. He believes what the Rebbe is saying is true. <clears throat> and that God is precious and God is... But he just doesn't have any love of God. He just is so... How do you say? So um, limited in his emotionals, in his, his emotional character, that he can't think of anything else except for himself. There's some people that don't love anything. There's some people that don't love themselves either. They don't love themselves. They just don't have any emotions. They're just cold people. <clears throat> there are people like that. In any case, that's called akara. This is a person that doesn't have any <clears throat> love of God, or he does have, and it goes away. And just want to say one more time, again, this is so the Rebbe is trying to point out to us how important and essential and vital it is to have love of God. It is not just a religious idea, and it's not just a you know, a, a, a Jewish idea or an idea for, you know, spiritually inclined people. This is supposed to be for everyone in the world because everyone in the world is being created by God. Uh, to feel this is not is a different story. But the fact of the matter is, and we have to keep reminding ourselves, we are creations. The whole world is, is being created. Nothing I have is really mine. There's no such thing. Everything I have is a gift from God. And God is doing it all the time, constantly. It's not just from a long time ago. The God created the world 5,000 or 5 billion or 5 trillion or 5 whatever, hextillion years ago. And that I'm just sort of, sort of floating around on those basic principles that he made back then. And it's not so. It might seem that way, but it certainly is not. Why does it seem that way? Because that's the way God made it so that we could come to <clears throat> some conclusion. Okay. Now a person wants to have love of God. He wants to have fear of God. He realizes how important it is. And it doesn't work. What does he do? He tries and he tries, nothing goes. So he says the Rebbe, what to do is ask for mercy. Ask for mercy. And that's what it means. One second, that's what it means. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's what it means. Amelech Amarumam Levare Meoz. He said it was like Hannah. Hannah, she really requested mercy. She was barren and she requested mercy and she gave birth to a child, Shmuel. <clears throat> because she requested, prayed. <clears throat> That's what it means. Amelech Amarumam Levare. That we say in our prayers, in our Jewish prayers, prayer, Jewish prayer book, that God is a king, that he's elevated alone. Umisnase, and that he is, uh, how do you say, it's above Miyamoto Lam, the days of the world. What does it mean? Shu Ram Venisa, God, true, he's close to us and he creates us. <clears throat> but don't think that that's what God is limited to, that he creates us. That happens to be, if you want to say, the lowest aspect of God. The cheapest trick that God does is he creates us. Right? <clears throat> that he creates us. That's the lowest thing that there can possibly be. Who Ram and saw God really, in fact, in his essence, is elevated, high, Megeder, Bechinus Olam. He's not in, in the category of any world, not even in spiritual worlds. Therefore, Barachamecha Rabim, God, in your great mercy. If so, how can God have a, really any relationship to us? Because of God's great mercy, Shemachmat, Hit Nasuto, because God is so high and so elevated, even higher than the spiritual, Ad Ein Chaker, without any <clears throat> possibility of, 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 of in, even investigating, even investigating what God is. God love of Harachman, therefore there is great mercy, I'll call Olam on the whole world. What are we saying? If God is so tremendously high, if God is just, just a simple example, right? People ask a question. If God creates the world, then who creates God? In other words, it's in it's incomprehensible that there can be something that exists that's not created. <clears throat> or you can just say, like, you know, the Greek philosophers or all these other philosophers, it's just always something always was there. There was always an ether or something like that. Something always exists. Didn't have a beginning. Don't ask. Don't ask. Could be. Could be. Why not? Could be. Well, we say no, that there's a creator. And this creator is <clears throat> not just creating us. He's creating the spiritual worlds. He's creating the highest of spiritual worlds. There's even the worlds that are above spiritual worlds. There's the worlds which are pre-creation worlds. In, in Kabbalah, it talks about it. about the, the Before the Tzimtzum, the ten hidden spherot, as a spherot, the Genuzot, and and all of these are just aspects of God's creative ability. <clears throat> but God himself is, to, is totally is, is not relevant even to think that God has created. Like we said a thousand times already, we'll say it a thousand and one times, that God in, in a normal sense does not exist. He creates all existence. He creates spiritual, he creates physical existence. He creates all being. So God in a way does not be, is not existing <laughs> In any sense that we know. But the fact of the matter is, is, he is true existence. God, all existence just comes from rays of his or words of his or letters of his. Okay, so we're dealing with reality over here. We're talking about reality. It's not a take it or leave it thing. This, we're in the middle of it, whether we want to or not. You can imagine whatever you want to, right? But the fact is, oh, okay, so we're supposed to love this God. How can we love God? He's so tremendous that we can love aspects of God that he creates me. Okay, leave me alone. He says, no, if you have that type of a love of God, it's not going to last very long because there's bad things that happen in the world. There's bad things. That some people would rather not be created. How can we have a feeling of constant love and appreciation for the creator of the universe that there's really nothing except for him? How can? Mercy. We have to ask for mercy. Why mercy? From the essence of God, he'll give mercy. Why should God have mercy on us? Why? It says, because God is so high, is therefore, what's that going to... Because the God is so high, and he's above all of the worlds, he's not above in the sense that he's this big man that sits up there and looks down on the worlds. God's reality is so infinitely intense <laughs> reality Right? He creates all being that it's so high, so incredibly incomprehensible. Ad ein chaker, that we can't even investigate what it is. Therefore, God has great mercy. I'll call Olam on the whole world. I feel well Olam Yonim, even on the upper worlds. I feel well became of Gan Eden, even on what's called the upper Gan Eden and Lamaila, and even higher and higher. 
Gan Eden is heaven, the upper heavens, higher and higher until the highest of heights. Shayach Eitzlo is relevant by God, mercy. Why? Kikulam Shfeilim Eitzlo, because all of the worlds, no matter how high you get, they're all very low, and they're just creations. By God, there's no difference between creating a, a, a piece of dirt on the, in the middle of the street or creating an angel in the world of Bria or a, a soul and Atzilus or something, or these upper levels, these high, infinitely high Kabbalistic levels. By God, it's the same thing. Masha'inkin, which is not the case, which is not the case in the worlds which are emanated or created. This is what's called after the Tzimtzum, after God made this thing called this contraction. Call Masha Yorid Matamata, everything which comes down lower. There is less and less mercy and until it gets to Oratzalazu. This physical world is an anu masigim. We do not understand the great mercy of God. Even on this physical world, the Gashmi, because we are betocha, we're in it. Key because the Rachmanos who it's alakatan because mercy is. <coughs> From someone who is great on some on someone who is low. Kikamoshu misnase, just like God is very high. At Ain Hikr without any end. Kach Rahmana, so his mercy is greater. But nevertheless, Hari, Eloke Olam, God is the God of the world. Rachamecha, have mercy on us. Okay, what's the Rebbe saying? We in this world, we don't feel God's mercy. We don't even feel that. There's any mercy at all. We feel, take it for granted that I exist. I exist, here I am, I'm in the world, and here I am. And what is reality? What I think is reality is reality. <clears throat> I'm the master of everything. There's even these people, and they say that they somehow, or, somehow or other, they manage to learn from quantum theory that everything is just in our minds. That everything is in our minds, which is close to the most stupid thing I think I've ever heard in my life. Because if everything comes from our minds, so where do our minds come from? <laughs> where are my, everything is a product of my mind. Whatever I think, that's what is. So where does my mind come from? Where does my thinking come from? Where did that come from? Anyway, I, I, don't, I haven't heard of any sort of a logical answer to that. <clears throat> Usually stupid uh, ideas, they have stupid at least exp uh, explanations for them. This one, I haven't even have a stupid explanation. <clears throat> However it is, we are all products of God's creation. And the lower the worlds go, we're also products of God's mercy. But we don't feel it. The lower the lower the worlds, the less and less we feel God, and the more and more we take for granted that we are God. And that's it. There's nothing more than us. <clears throat> that's what it means. That's what it means, the God of the world. In your great mercy. Our request is because we do not understand in our mind the great mercy on us. Therefore, you arouse great mercy. So that we shouldn't sink and get drown in this world. And that God, you should be the shield of our salvation. Miskav Badenu. You should be a fortress for us. What does it mean? Miskav, Kamochoma, like a wall. Miskav of a mukafis, that a wall surrounds us <clears throat> and protects us. Cain mugging that God also should shield Umachse and protect Lahastir to hide from us our enemies. I'm sorry. It blinds the eyes of the external forces that they shouldn't rule. Okay, what's going on over here? God creates the world, right? So there's a low world. God wants the world to be low. And so part of the lowness of this world is the confusion that it makes and destructive forces that there are. And diseases, spiritual diseases, physical diseases, sickness, it says that in Mount Sinai, when God revealed his <clears throat> oneness at Mount Sinai, that all of the sick were healed. The blind could see, the deaf could hear, the mute could speak. It was last week's Torah portion. And the, 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 the crippled could walk. 
everyone, when God is revealed, there's no <clears throat> sickness. There's only health. But God made the world. And the world is a place where God decided to conceal himself. That's what the word world means. Olam is Helen. And part of this, there's all sorts of weird <clears throat> creepers and creatures in there. You ever like this? Sometimes you, you lift up a rock outside a big, if there's a big rock or something, you, there's all these weird bugs and, 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 and ants and creepers and spiders and all sorts of crazy things going on in the darkness. As soon as the light comes, they all run away. They all scatter away. They all scatter. <clears throat> when there's a dark place, a dark place, so then there's all these weird things that happen. So that's what the world is also. God created the world, and in this world, there's all sorts of <clears throat> negative forces, and these negative forces are inside of us as well. Uh, the, the self-destructive forces, destructive forces, <clears throat> doubts and depression and aggression and addiction, addiction, and all these four, all these things are. Uh, we have to ask God for help us to protect us. There's sometimes it's so the world is so. I mean, I don't know if you know any people that are addicts. I know people that are addicts. I, I learned a lot about it, actually. I, I took a whole series of classes on it. Addiction is a thing that always really, even before I was observant Jew, it always really, <clears throat> how do you say, amazed me. It was very perplexing. What? That a person, he's got free will, right? You get that free will. And a person decides he wants to stop drinking liquor, smoking cigarettes, and he can't. He can't stop. He can't stop doing it. He knows that it's wrong. But he can't, I thought, well, that's really incredible. You know, a person really, I mean, he's just his own boss. Nobody's forcing him. <clears throat> he can't do it. And the reason simply is, is because the world is so strong. Human nature is so strong that if you let a little bit of self-destruction in, then it becomes like a, what do you say, an option in life. It becomes like a, like a whirlpool that sort of sucks you in. And that a person just can't see that there's any alternative. These people that they're they're drug addicts or whatever, they just can't see that there's any way out. I they look around and they see there's thousands of people walking on the streets that are not drug addicts. There's thousands of people that are not smokers. They don't smoke. But you can so take an example from them. You can live without smoking. No, can't do it. Some internal process occurs that the person somehow with everything becomes closed. Money becomes closed. So therefore, we have to. How do we get out of it? <clears throat> we have to ask God to do something like He did in Mount Sinai. If he reveals himself a little bit and has a bit of mercy on us, afterwards, he's after all, he's the one that put us into this situation. <clears throat> so a person would say, listen, what is what does God care about us? Mere mortals. We're down here in this world just running around like, you know, like what it is like uh, ants underneath a rock or something like that. What does God care about us? What does he care about us? Huh? It's like, you know, somebody's going to about to build a huge building, a 500-story building or something that's going to cost $20 million. He cares, you know, if they, if they lift up a rock and there's a couple of ants under there and they get crushed. What does he care? Right? God is infinitely higher than a builder, and we're infinitely lower than ants in comparison to God. So the answer is, is that that's not a good example because God cares about us. God cares infinitely about us. That's the whole idea of the Torah. Why give the Torah to us? Because infinite mercy that God has. And part of it is that we, even if we transgress the whole entire Torah, everything, we've done every sin, if we ask for mercy, God will have mercy on us. <clears throat> so, and that's the way that you can have constant love for God. Ask God for mercy. And you don't have to do it in public, and it doesn't have to be out loud. And it doesn't mean you can just do it on yourself, to yourself, <clears throat> between you and your creator. You know, you can see if it says, okay, so that's the, that's what the sentence says. What does it say? There will not be akara, mashakela, barzecha. Let's just look at the sentence again. And one minute. Here. Huh? Yeah. What's going on here? Here we go. Uh, 